Hi, thanks for joining me in another video today. First, I wanted to say that my goal of my channel is to give some insight and knowledge about owning an electric vehicle. I hope that others will view my channel and become excited to buy one. Now, I try to make my channel diverse in showing general knowledge about all EVs. So right now I have a Tesla, so the majority of my time is examples from that car. However, electric vehicles pretty much function the same with lithium ion batteries. So I'll try to diversify the cars in my videos, but if anyone wants to let me borrow their EV for a video, just let me know. In today's video, I'll be talking about regenerative braking. Regenerative braking is used in both an electric and hybrid cars, like the Toyota Prius. So what is it exactly? Basically, it's your motors working in reverse to give you extra energy inside your car. A common misconception is that regenerative braking uses the brakes to regain energy. It's actually the motor which regains the energy. Let me show you how it works in the car. Let's go to two popular locations in my state. The first is South Mountain, which is centrally located in Phoenix, and the second is at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm at the bottom of South Mountain and I'm going to drive up to one of the higher peaks, which is around 5 miles. Um, right now, the car is at 48%, which is around 140 miles. So we're going to drive up and see how many miles we lose, which is probably over 5 miles. So let's go. The original peak I wanted to go to was closed for renovation. Um, so this peak, I'll get to show you here on this chart um, how much energy was used. Um, right now, um, I'm at 44%, which is around 127 miles. Um, so I drove 6 miles and um, used 479 watt hours per mile. And here's a consumption chart. So right about here is where I started the drive uphill. And you can see the chart going upwards. And this section is just regular street driving before going to the mountain. And you can see how it peaks up and down. I'm at the top of one of the peaks. And right here you can see a nice outlook, a scenic landscape of Phoenix and all those buildings over there is downtown Phoenix. So I'm back at the bottom of the mountain. So when I left the top peak, um, the car AC was on so it was cooling. So I left at 43%. But now I'm all the way back at the bottom and I'm still at 43%. So let me show you the chart here. Right about here is when we started driving back down the peak again. And this green area shows the regenerative braking. And energy used was negative 38 watt hours per mile. So it's a different day and I'm in a different place. I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona and I'm gonna drive up to the top of Lowell Observatory and then drive back down. And after that, I'll show you the graphs. Okay, just reset the odometer. supposed to be a whole mile drive all the way to the top of Lower Observatory. Right now I'm halfway because yet again another destination has been closed just like in South Mountain. So the car used 1,172 watt hours um, per mile on our 0.5 mile drive. Here on the graph you can see the trip, the energy used on the trip upwards and the hill was pretty steep. Okay, I'm gonna reset the odometer and then I'm gonna drive back down and then I'll show you the results again. So 
I made it back down and the car used negative 484 watt hours per mile. And here is the chart and right here is when we started, um, it's when we went downhill. And you can see that the car actually, um, this part charged the battery. So isn't that pretty cool? When you're driving downhill, your car is actually charging the battery. It's regenerating energy. The main goal of a gas electric hybrid car is to absorb the inefficiencies of the gas system to make the vehicle as a whole more efficient. A big part where hybrids get their energy from is through regenerative braking. In a gas car, when you're braking or when you're going down a hill, you're still using gasoline. When you use the brakes, you're converting the kinetic energy of your car moving forward into heat energy. But in a hybrid, you're converting that kinetic energy to electrical energy by putting it back into the battery to be used again. Regenerative braking is working all the time, not just going up and down a hill. In everyday traffic and stops and goes, the motor will slow you down. Regenerative braking is more obvious on an EV than it is on a hybrid. This is because the smaller battery in a hybrid cannot accept 100% of the energy available. On the freeway, regenerative braking also works, both on a clear and busy freeway. It's just a little different. One great thing about regenerative braking in electric vehicles is you won't use your brake pads as much. But to be clear, you still need brakes. You still need to stop the car. A lot of long-term EV owners have reported that they can go as far as 200,000 miles on their original brake pads. The main point is, regenerative braking increases the efficiency of your car, whether you're driving in city traffic or on the freeway. I hope I was able to clearly describe what regenerative braking is. It's awesome technology and helps with efficiency. Now it's time for my segment where Kaya helps me review toy cars. Today we're going to be reviewing the Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo. That's a long name. And the base model is the Porsche Panamera 4E Hybrid, which starts at 103,800 US dollars and it goes all the way up to 198,100 US dollars. This is a plug-in hybrid. The specific one I'm holding costs 191,700 US dollars. Okay, so let me go back to the details on just the 4E hybrid version of the Porsche Panamera. Okay, so it has 14 miles of all electric range and it has a 51 miles per gallon equivalent as long as they're still charging the battery. But after those 14 miles, the e-hybrid gets 23 miles per gallon. Total driving range from both the 21 um, gallon gas tank and the battery is 490 miles. Okay, so let's open this up. Hiya. While I'm opening this, um, you can plug in the Pan Panamera 4E <laughs> Hybrid into a conventional 120 volt household outlet to get a full overnight charge in about 12 hours or use the optional 240 volt portable charging cord stored in the hatch. So, let's take a, look, a closer look at this. Looks very stylish and very cool. Has a cool color, even the wheels are blue. What do you guys think? Kaya, most importantly, what do you think? What do you think of this Porsche? And it took her a while to look at this car. <laughs> oh, yes. She approves. It's kind of expensive though, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe that's why it took her a little longer to lick it. So, what do you guys think? It's cute. Thanks for spending time with me today again. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Kaya's Tesla. Kaya's my dog. I also have an email if you'd like to reach me. It's at info at Thank you and happy charging.